and welcome to our second preview show of the week here at Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Solent's Chris Temple joins me as we look ahead to another big weekend in the Premier League. Coming up on today's show, we'll be looking back at that cup win over Forest Green in the week. We'll also be talking to women's manager Steve Cuss, who joins us ahead of the first game of the season on Sunday. And finally, we'll be looking ahead to the game against Leicester City at the King Power Stadium tomorrow. But first, we're going to start back at Wednesday night and that cup win over Forest Green Rovers. There were some fine saves from Mark Travers in the penalty shootout to send us through. A shootout it is after a nil-nil draw. It's King, first up, no problem. Scores into the right-hand side of the goal. Mills steps up, left foot in, and Travers makes a good save. Moving away to his left-hand side, it remains 1-0 to Bournemouth after one penalty. It's going to do his job from 12 yards here, up against Woolacott. It's going to be right-footed, stuttering run-up, and rolls it into the bottom left-hand corner. Red and black fans, they're waving them to try and put Dawson off against Travers. He saved it again! Two out of two, Mark Travers! He's having the luck of the Irish at the moment, the big man. Here comes Ibe then to put the cherries right in the box seat. Right-footed, saved by Woolacott. Down to his left, not a great penalty, good save. James Morton to try and get Forest Green on the board here in the shootout. Travers again, three out of three for the Cherries goalkeeper. Can the Big Danes see them home here? It's Billing, rifles at home. No mistake from that one. And in the end, the hierarchy tells the Premier League side go through and they all run to their Irish goalkeeper, Mark Travers. Well, some brilliant saves from Mark Travers there. Chris, it wasn't uh, as comfortable as Eddie Howe would have liked, was it? Uh, you could say that, yeah. I mean, first of all, let's just start with those saves from Mark Travers. I mean, literally nothing gets past him here. Um, you know, I know he shipped five away at Crystal Palace on the last day of the season, but he actually didn't have much to do in that game, did he? Um, realistically, he played the ball out with his feet quite nicely. His distribution was impressive. He has that sort of the round, I always call it a roundhouse kick, a sort of sideways volleyed kick that goes flat down the field, um, which I think, can't remember whose toe it landed on at one point, but really impressed with his distribution, um, his concentration. And yeah, in the penalty shootout, I saw a couple of Cherries players tweeting that they wouldn't want to be taking penalties against Mark Travers because first of all he's so massive um, so yeah really good for him um, and the team yeah I think not lucky to go through but a lot of huffing and puffing end product wasn't really there a combination of you know bounces of the ball and a bit of bad luck and a lack of quality in the final third as well and a bit of a lack of confidence uh, in the final third from the strikers at the minute as well which is you know, that's a, a, I guess a, a bigger concern we might be coming to that a bit later but all in all you know picking out some of the players in that game I thought Kilkenny had a, a great debut until he tired a little bit towards the end he seemed to be very happy to get on the ball confident to take people on uh, receive the ball in tight areas so yeah I think he's been a real a sort of emergence, a real find. Um, he's definitely accelerated through, I think, better than Eddie Howe thought he could. So he's, you know, and the fact that the club have got through to the next round means that he'll, I'm sure, get another opportunity. The one that stood out for me was Chris Meppham. Um, again, Bournemouth weren't under a lot of pressure defensively, but I just thought he had a real sort of composed, calm, authoritative um, look of things at the back there when he was taking charge. He made one crucial interception at the near post where uh, the, the guy behind him had a tap in. Um, the three-on-one, I'm pretty sure that was Meppham who broke down their three-on-one towards the end as well. So, yeah, he was he was one for me. I thought, do you know what, Chris Meppham, that, that's a real sort of step forward for him. I know it context of opposition, League Two opposition, of course, uh, compared to the Premier League, but with the injury to Charlie Daniels, the game which I'm sure we'll mention later on, um, that could involve a bit of rejigging at the back and that could see Chris Meppham continue to get plenty of minutes uh, in central defence. So, yeah, he was he was one that I wanted to pick out as having had a, a real good game. And Harry Wilson, again, I thought was excellent. Harry Wilson, again, he, ha he had a chance in the first half and then Joshua King had that header in the second half. And we had Dominic Solanke who, you know, he went down in the box. Was it a penalty? Was it not? But there were the chances there. They just weren't taken. Yeah, just they? the final ball. You know, a couple of fizz across the penalty area, didn't they? Um, yeah, I mean, Dom Solanke, he needs a goal of some description. Scored a couple in pre-season, of course, but you just feel like in competitive matches, it's just not falling for him at the moment. And until he gets up and running, um, you know, I think, you know, he, the manager's pretty happy with what he does behind the scenes. And, you know, he's made an impact as a sub a couple of times, but but he, you feel like he needs minutes. Um, he didn't have a lot to feed off with Callum the other night because Callum is a bit short of confidence, I think, as well. Um, he does a lot of work for the team that doesn't involve scoring goals, of course. That's the thing with Callum is you can't judge him, although he is a number nine, you can't judge him solely on his goals column. 
he does a lot of that physical work, a lot of running, particularly away from home. Um, but it, it just feels like he's not quite started his season yet. He's in the England squad. Um, hopefully he'll get on in one of those two games against Bulgaria or, or Kosovo as well. And that's good for his confidence as well. So, yeah, the sooner that Callum gets up and running in the goals column, the better. And speaking of confidence, it was a obviously a win in the cup, but all wins breed confidence and that will set them up well ahead of the weekend, won't it? Yeah, I think, I think more for probably for the individuals who came in and did well rather than the team as a whole because drawing nil-nil against a League 2 team, you know, on the face of it shouldn't be that good for confidence but getting through is the main thing it's been a good competition Burton away you know there's a bit of history attached to, to that fixture as well it's not an ideal draw really that's a bit sticky to be honest with you but Bournemouth have had quite a lot of luck with home draws in the uh, the League Cup I think in the last two and a bit seasons the only away ties they've had have been Chelsea away twice so they were probably due a, an away trip um, so yeah a nice place to go back and some fond memories from the League 2 promotion of course but um, yeah all in all to take forward a clean sheet I suppose is a positive to take forward um, yeah certainly it's certainly better to go through than to have been dumped out let's put it that way and as you said clean sheet for, for Mark Travers Chris Meffham did very well a lot of players have, have staked a good claim for themselves haven't they yeah I think as I mentioned Meffham earlier on you know, Mark Travers at the moment I think you know the manager admitted afterwards that the, the, the choice between Ramsdale and Travers for the number one spot Mark Travers did miss a lot of pre-season because he had a thumb injury that he picked up with Ireland over the summer so you know again great performance for him to have just off in terms of going off with Ireland again that will give him a spring in his step I'm sure going off to, to join up with them for this international break I've seen him this morning actually with a Massive suitcase. Uh, ready to, quite a few of the internationals have come in with. You think they're going away to Leicester for the night, but no, they're going off for a, a good week or so with their international colleagues as well. So um, yeah, so that's that's good for him. Um, yeah, and even people like Gavin Kilkenny, that will give them a, an extra step in training. He's not going to be close to the Premier League squad at the moment, but you know, if if there were any more injuries, and I don't think we can really afford any more, um, then he he would prove to be a, a good bench player. And as you mentioned, Burton up next in, in the next round. It's not an ideal draw being away from home. We have been lucky with the home draws, but in terms of opposition, it's not obviously wanting to be disrespectful to, to Burton. It's it's a, it's a nice draw, isn't it? Well, you could have got anybody. You know, you could have got... You know, uh Man United, Liverpool, anybody, City. Um, so, you know, from that point of view, a lower league team is, is better than getting one of your Premier League opponents. It's a different test um, for a number of reasons, you know, mentally as much as anything, you know, raising your game against, um, you know, per perceived lower league, well, they are lower league opposition, um, but still with an important job to do. And it's a great fixture for Burton these days, you know, with uh, a Premier League team turning up, albeit they would have wanted Liverpool, Man United, I'm sure, or, or Derby from down the road or something. But, um, yeah, as far as the Cherries are concerned, it's a tricky tie, but it's one that they would be back to get through. Absolutely. Well, this weekend it is the first game of the season for our women's team and it was quite a strike from Katie Kingshot in the week in the final pre-season friendly. Well, a great goal from Katie King shot there. Now, as you can see, I am delighted to be joined by the women's team manager, Steve Cuss. Steve, thank you for joining us. This weekend, first game of the season, it's going to be an exciting one, isn't it? Yeah, it seems to be a long pre-season. We're really looking forward to the, uh, you know, the competitive game starting. So, yeah, the FA Cup, it's a little bit unusual to be starting with a cup match, but that's just the way the fixtures fall within the women's game. So, you know, obviously a home game in the FA Cup, it's, uh, it's one we're really looking forward to. And of course, you know, starting in the FA Cup last year, the team got to the, the first round proper for the, the first time in the club's history. And that's something that I'll be looking to do again. Yeah, it was a great achievement last year to get to that first round. Um, obviously, we want to try and do as well as that again this year, but it may be even look a little bit further. But, you know, obviously, as a manager, you've got to just look at the one game. So, you know, Sunday's going to be a tough game for us and uh, we're just going to just try and do our best on Sunday and try and get through this opening round. And we've had eight weeks of pre-season. How, how has that gone from your perspective? Yeah, it's been really good. It's been really Really good in terms of working with the players, uh, included a pre-season tour for the first time, which was great down in Devon, a couple of nights uh, away, bonding with the players as well as spending time out on the grass, coaching the players, which is really good. Six pre-season games against some tough opposition in there as well. So, you know, I think we've learned little bits from everything that we've done over pre-season and uh, hopefully that will, you know, go well for us on Sunday. And that pre-season camp, it's just as important for the girls to bond off the pitch as it is on it, isn't it? Yeah, it's something that we added this year. Uh, obviously, we do it with the, with the male players across all age groups and uh, so we put it in for the women's team a couple of nights away obviously you spend that time out on the pitch which is good and good for us as coaches to be able to spend that time out on the pitch but the bits off the pitch as well we were able to, to socialize together and bond together eat together and all that's going to help us I think throughout the season. And for you, what are your kind of ambitions for the season with the women's team? Yeah, we want to we just keep moving the women's game 
forward and moving AFC Bournemouth forward. Obviously, last year was a good good season. Only losing the two games in the league and not getting promoted was was tough to take. So, you know, in many ways, we're just looking to try and improve on on what we did last season and uh, see where that takes us this year. And for you, you've taken on the women's team this year. What was it for you that attracted you to, to the women's team and made you want to, to take it on? Yeah, obviously as part of my role as head of community and the Community Sports Trust, the, the women's uh, team falls under our, our work that we do and uh, I've always overseen that since 2015, um, putting things in place and you know, probably the ambition was always to take over the team at some point and it seems right to do that right now. Um, and so far in the eight weeks, I've absolutely loved it, loved working with the players. It's been a busy time for us as pre-season always is but you know, it's, it's something that I want to do well with with the team. And for you, over, over the course of pre-season, a lot of your players have got a lot of minutes and that will set, set, set them in good stead for the weekend. Yeah, as I said, I think the six games have been important as well as the training sessions. We've learned something from, from every single game. There's been some different challenges there and I think that's, that's been good good test for us as, a, as individuals and as a team. And uh, as always, we're just trying to look at those little things that we can take from each game, work with the players, try and make the players better as we do as a football club here. And um, hopefully if we can continue to do that, we'll get some positive results. And just for those people at home who, who don't know, how can they find out more information about the women's team? Yeah, it's, it's, it's all over social media, both the AFC Bournemouth and the AFC Bournemouth community, but on the, on the website as well and uh, on the match day programme. So there's lots of different ways of finding out about the, about the um, fixtures that we have coming up. And uh, we start, we play our home games at Verwood Town. So that's where we're playing on Sunday at two o'clock kickoff. There we go, playing on Sunday at two o'clock. Steve, thank you very much for joining us. Now then, the first team, they are heading to Leicester this weekend and Eddie Howe has been speaking in his pre-match press conference. Yeah, good for Callum. Good to see that he's he's been picked again and um, I'm sure he'll be very pleased and that'll do him the world of good. Same as any other player, it's great to work with players that want to improve and I think that's always the, the hallmark for me. Yeah, huge blow for him, huge blow for us, I think... Um, our only thought at the moment is for Charlie and trying to support him through the initial the initial shock really of the news because uh, it's obviously a serious injury he's going to need supporting through the initial phases of it um, we hope the operation goes well and then he can begin his journey back yeah not only the dressing room I think this club really does um, look after its players very well on an emotional level the supporters will rally around him I think he knows how much he's loved here and I think yeah it's been a really challenging year for him and I think Brendan deserves a lot of credit for what he's done um, at Leicester in really difficult circumstances let's not forget that And um, but just looking on the pitch I think he's transformed their style of play I think they're very confident in in their skin now they they are adapting to his philosophy and, and adapting very well to that yeah, we go there knowing it's going to be a good game well, that was Eddie Howe talking in his pre-match press conference this morning. Now, Chris, this time last year, we, we played Leicester here at Vitality Stadium and it was a 4-2 win and they'll be hoping to try and replicate something like that, won't they? Yeah, something like that would be nice, albeit maybe with a clean sheet they should have kept rather than conceding those couple of late goals in that uh, that game. But that was a great performance, you know, and then we look at the reverse fixture up there and it wasn't such a good day, losing 2-0, albeit um, Brendan Rodgers had, had had an impact by then and started to turn Leicester around. They had a great sort of back end to the season, Leicester, um, and look a really good unit now and I would be thinking that they could easily be challenging the top seven this year. They finished ninth last season, which actually if they'd had a better first half of the season could you know, could well have been much better than that. So yeah, I, I do like a lot of the Leicester players. I like the way they play. It's a great ground to visit, um, not just because they have some lovely cakes in the media room, by the way, but uh, just, to those. yeah, I am very much so. Particularly the Jaffa cake, there's a massive Jaffa cake cake. It's unbelievable, uh, as I need, really need it as well. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just a good place to go. The fans are very loud there. They always play Kasabian over the uh, PA system as a local band, which is one of my favourite bands. So yeah, as you can tell I'm looking forward to going but I'm hoping that Bournemouth can get the points. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely and, and Brendan Rodgers aside they're unbeaten this season and they look strong don't they? They, they held Chelsea as well earlier yeah, in the they've, season. Yeah they've recruited pretty well um, you know they added Tielemans on a permanent deal from Monaco for a best part of £40 million pounds, but he looked a class act uh, last season as well who enjoyed his, his loan spell and therefore you know liked where the club was going and, and what the new manager was uh, achieving. Jose Perez of course who's got scoring form here um, from his Newcastle days against Bournemouth uh, again a useful sign and they've been playing him sort of of wide of a, a front three at times um, a bit more solid when they went to Chelsea but and of course the one player I really like who seems to have done well against Bournemouth is James Madison um, had a really good game up there last season ran the show really um, in the England squad as well as he has been before but he's be getting closer to, to uh, that first senior England call up as well and still very young I think he's 22 23 so just out of England under 21's uh, sort of duty as well so yeah they'll be he'll be one that Bournemouth will need to, to keep a lid on tomorrow that is absolutely for sure uh, and you know you, you 
you factor in the fact they lost their star defender, Harry Maguire, right at the end of the transfer window. Yeah, I mean, albeit they will have prepared for that in the background, I'm sure, and they knew that was going to happen. Um, so, yeah, they, they've they've had a bit of overhaul. Um, one or two players can't get in the team. The likes of Damari Gray, great player, can't get in their team at the moment. So, yeah, really a really talented squad um, who like to play it, uh, the right way. And they had a, a very similar midweek to, to us going through on penalties. They were obviously against Newcastle. So for them, they played Wednesday night just like us. So so both teams will, you know, have had the same amount. Of yeah, rest. and the only catching thing about that is that they didn't hardly, they only changed two players possibly. Yeah, it was a very strong yeah, size. Yeah, Wes Morgan came in and uh, one of, I think only one other, if, I, if I'm off the top of my head. But yeah, they've treated the competition with respect. They were away at a Premier League team who Newcastle will have been on a high from their win at Spurs, of course, as well. But for Leicester and for Bournemouth, you know, this competition is a, is a real chance of silverware. It absolutely is. So, Brendan Rodgers has got confidence in his squad to go and play Wednesday and then play again on Saturday. Um, you know, everyone talks about the recovery and the turnaround. He's obviously trying to build a bit of momentum with the, his sort of, you know, some of the new players they're betting in. Um, and yeah, I, I think fair play to them for going, for going that strong and going through. You know, time will tell whether that was the right decision. But if they go on to win the cup, it will be a, a great decision if all their players stay fit as well. But Bournemouth don't have the luxury of such a big squad and obviously have quite a few injuries at the moment as well. So, um, yeah, I was, I was surprised to see how strong Leicester went, though. And speaking of Bournemouth's injuries, the big story to come out this week is Charlie Daniels, that season-ending injury. It's, it's such a shame for him, isn't it, just coming back last week? It's, it's just so hard to uh, to sort of find the right words for it, really. I mean, first of all, it's absolutely devastating. Um, just such terrible luck for Charlie, who... And, and particularly having worked all summer, you know, the lonely yards over the summer, when he's had a bit of time away on break, he's been in the gym doing his rehab on holiday. A lot of the time he's been here working hard in the gym, rehabbing when the other players have been either away on holiday or away on pre-season. Got back ahead of schedule, you know, and the manager admitted, he said a couple of weeks ago, didn't he? I asked Charlie if he could do a job for us and he said he could uh, away at Villa. And what a job he did. You know, he got through the 90 minutes. Then just over there behind us, the most innocuous, you know, no one, no one, no contact, no one near him, his other knee, um, and just a, a terrible injury. So as much as the physical rehab now, it's got to be a, a real emotional and mental support now. And I know the club is, you know, excels really in that, in that side of things, looking after people. Um, and that's what Charlie will need now. He is a strong character. Um, just talking to a couple of other players this morning, they, they say that Charlie sort of has a, he has a very, very brave face on things. He, all through his sort of some of the more negative moments of his uh, last 12 months or so, he's always come in, been the sort of chirpy guy. You never quite know what's going on behind the scenes, but the front facing Charlie Daniels has always been one with a, a positive outlook. So uh, he'll, he'll need that positive outlook this time. And um, this is a real bad blow at this stage of the season. And you know, it's, seems almost, you know, I guess churlish to say from a footballing point of view, Bournemouth, it gives them a problem at left back because Diego Rico, you know, hasn't found hasn't found a consistent amount of form. So there's going to have to be a reshuffle. Um, if you're asking me now, I wonder if you might play Nathan Ake at left back at, at Leicester. Um, last time he played left back, Bournemouth won 5-0 away at Brighton. So that would be an omen. Yeah, it's, it's food for thought in that position, isn't it? Obviously, De Diego Rico there, Nathan Nacco, we've seen Adam Smith play there and with the way Jack, Jack Stacey played the other night at right back, it wouldn't be a surprise if Jack Stacey went into right back and then Adam Smith into the left back position. That's the thing, isn't it? I mean, as we mentioned before about strengthening the full back positions, Lloyd Kelly is still a little bit away, who's a natural left sided defender. Um, yeah, Jack Stacey played the other night. Um, it's a big step up to the to the Premier League um, for him. He'll actually come up against uh, his the opposite full back from Luton last year, James Justin, who went to Leicester over the summer. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the decision. Do you go with Adam Smith? at left back um, and Jack Stacey at right back do you have to play a back three um, with someone like Ryan Fraser maybe playing on the left of the midfield four which you don't really want I know Adam Smith doesn't like playing left back uh, he'll obviously do a job wherever he's asked to the manager feels that Adam Smith played some of his best games at left back actually so that might be bad news for Smithy in terms of having to swap over Diego Rico you know you're, you're 10 million pound left back you're looking at it and going that should be enough cover um, but yeah for whatever reason, it just isn't quite happening for Diego at the moment. Um, whether a run of games is the answer, whether Eddie has the confidence to put him in for a run of games, particularly away from home, we'll wait and see. But again, if, you, if I was a betting man, and I, I don't know anything on this, I just wonder whether, with Mepham having done well this season, that sort of alleviates the problem of moving Nathan Ake out of centre-half. So I would say Ake at left-back, Cook and Mepham, and then Adam Smith at right-back. And just finally, you know what's coming. I am going to ask you for a score Oh, you are this week. I am this week. Last week City at home. <laughs> Off camera, I said City 3-1, by the way. Of course, of course. every time.
Um, you want to score, do you? Yeah, I want to okay, score Okay, right, week. fine. Um, I mean, you take a point at Leicester. Definitely take a point at Leicester. I might have to go with a Willow 1-1. A Willow 1-1. Yeah, because Leicester have been solid this season. haven't conceded many goals. Um, I'm going to go for a Willow 1-1 draw. Well, a Willow 1-1 draw then. Well, if you are at home and over 18 and you want to have a go at predicting the score, you can head over to Mansion's website to have a go yourself. This week's winner will win a signed Bournemouth shirt. That's all we've got time for today. If you are going up to Leicester, then have a safe journey. But if not, make sure you keep an eye across all of our social media channels for the latest updates. Bye for now.